So here is the first question. It's going to appear up here and also on your phone. And the question is approximately what percent of the U.S. economy was government spending in 2021? All right, so for non-economists out there, the way to think about this is if you think about all of the dollars that were spent in the economy in 2021, uh, think about for every one dollar, how many cents of that dollar was spent by the government, the federal, state, or local governments of the United States? Okay, so I'll give some time. I can see that the people are voting. You know, don't give it too much thought. Don't Google. I just want to know what your impressions are. It's not a right or wrong thing. I mean, I just want to know. About 105, 108 people have answered. Okay, three Two, one, okay, we're gonna move on, okay? And let's see what the responses are. All right, so um, 35% of you said uh, approximately 44% was government spending. Uh, oh, you're adjusting it, come on, come on, don't do that, lock, it's, I've locked it, I've locked it on you now, okay? I can't even read off the answers without people starting to adjust things. All right, so, uh, you know, the modal answer uh, is uh, 44%, okay, and then you can see the sort of distribution of answers ar around that. Uh, I, you can see, I can see that if I can do the math in my head that, uh, you know, a little over 50% of you thought that it was 11%, 22%, or 33%, and then 36% obviously said 44%, 11% said 55%. The answer is actually 44%, so this is something where the majority uh, actually uh, got it right here. Um, and that does surprise a lot of people because usually people think of this is the United States, the land of the free, the home of the brave, uh, the land of small government, of brutal, unbridled capitalism. Uh, and in fact, the answer is 44%. Now, this is a little bit elevated relative to uh, previous years, actually not nearly as much as 2020. In 2020, it hit 48%. But um, I'll show you what it is uh, both in the U.S. and across countries uh, in, uh, you know, relative to previous years. This, this graph actually only goes through 2020 because it's the cross-country comparison data from the OECD, and they take while, a while to, com to, to compile all that. But for 2021, the U.S. is going to be 44%, uh, and the U.S. is in red here. And so you can see that, you know, there was a big spike up around, uh, uh, you know, around 2020 due to the government's response uh, to COVID. But, uh, you know, it was hovering around upper 30s, uh, you know, through the late 1990s and early 2000s, then it uh, spiked up quite a bit here around 2008, 2009. Took a little while to get back down, uh, and then uh, and then and then spiked back up again. Okay, so um, so obviously, what happened in 2020? Well, that was you know the government had a massive fiscal response to COVID. Um, that's what uh, John Cochran is talking about with all of the uh, creation of money, borrowing, and 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 sending out of those of those uh, of those stimulus checks and and, and many other. Uh, programs were expanded, like unemployment insurance, uh, various other government government programs. Uh, what happened in 2008, 2009? What was this? Okay, Great Recession or Global Financial Crisis. Uh, so what was all this government spending going on there? What were what was the U.S. and all these other countries doing? What were they doing? Bailouts. Okay, so like bailing out car company, uh, you know, major car companies, bailing out. Um, you know, other industry bailing out banks and financial institutions in particular, and also expanding unemployment insurance and, and, and putting on expansions into the, uh, into the social safety net. Okay, so, uh, so very good. Okay, so, so now where is the money coming from for government spending? Where do governments uh, get the money? What are the options that are available to them? We heard about some of them in the previous lecture, so why doesn't somebody just raise their hand and tell me what the options are available for government spending? Yeah, for financing it. How do they do it? Okay, so you can tax or you can borrow. All right, those are two of the big things. Okay, uh, what else? We heard about one other one in John Cochrane's talk. Printing money, okay, otherwise known as seniorage, right? Um, is there anything else that a government could do to raise money? Okay, so there's, there's one other thing, which uh, is number two up here. See, so we, we got, you named three out of the four pretty quickly, which is fees for the use of, uh, of public services. So, um, uh, so, you know, if uh, any of you attend a state university and you pay tuition to the university, uh, you know, last I checked, state universities are not free. They're, less, they're much cheaper than private universities, but um, those are fees for services. Um, similarly, you know, if you ride on, a, on public transportation, you're paying a fee for, uh, for service. So these are often called use, uh, usage fees, and uh, they're going to be an interesting part of uh, how we think about the ways that uh, government might, uh, might finance Finance its, its activities. Um, great. So the word seniorage is just a fancy, uh, fancy name for 
uh, for, creating, for creating money. And there are many different ways that the, the Federal Reserve uh, has been financing government spending. Um, it's interesting, uh, you know, seniorage, uh, in the old days, seniorage used to be the idea that uh, uh, a government could do something like literally print a dollar at a very, very low cost, like say two cents, and then they would go, go spend that dollar, and because they were able to spend a dollar in the economy, that was then, they then created poof out of thin air, you know, 98 cents out of the, uh, out of the, out of the dollar that they had printed. Uh, more recently, you know, the way that it, that it works would be if the central bank is buying uh, debt directly from the U.S. Treasury, so basically giving the U.S. Treasury money, and the U.S. Treasury then goes and spends it. Um, there's a little bit of, of a debate out there about how much money is the Fed really printing, because the Fed doesn't actually do that. What happens is the Treasury issues debt to primary dealers in financial markets. These are big companies like Citigroup and Goldman Sachs, uh, and then the, the Fed immediately then goes and buys those securities from those primary dealers with newly created printed money. So there's a little bit of a circuitous route there, but really it's the same thing. It's, it's seniorage, it's, it's money printing. All right, so those are uh, ways that uh, the government uh, uh, raises money. Um, this is a, a graph that shows government spending uh, and uh, different ways that the government raises money, particularly with respect to, to taxes, comparing uh, tax receipts uh, to total federal expenditures. And you can see the, the difference between the green line and the purple line here uh, is the deficit, all right? And, there, and there's gonna be a, a lot of talk about government deficits in, uh, in a, a future session by uh, John Kogan coming up on Wednesday. He's kind of the government deficit uh, specialist. You can see that at some point there was a, you know, the late 1990s, there was a small surplus, although uh, this is a bit illusory because the federal government and state and local governments have many different ways of sort of hiding deficits, you know, running deficits, but not saying they're running a deficit, usually by making future promises to people that they're gonna give them social security or medical benefits or pensions, things like that, and then they don't actually set aside money today to fund it. So that's actually kind of like running a kind of hidden deficit. Um, but anyway, the difference between the purple line and the green line here shows you what the, what the deficit would be. And then the blue line is just what you would think of as being traditional uh, tax receipts, income taxes for both individuals and corporations. Adding on top of that, you get to the purple line. The, uh, to get to the purple line, you have to add on top of that the taxes that, that you pay out of your paycheck for Social Security and for Medicare. You know, I don't know, I mean, uh, many, many of you have probably had a job where you've seen the, you know, the deductions that come out of your paycheck for all the various things, you know, for Social Security, for uh, medic, to pay for Medicare, uh, to pay for unemployment insurance, to pay individual income taxes. Um, it's often a revelation when you get your first real full-time job just how much actually comes out of there. Um, but you'll, you'll, you've, either you've experienced that so far or you will experience it when you, when you get there. Um, another way to look at government spending, you know, this is just federal government spending. There's also what's called general government, which is uh, federal, state, and local, and that's, that's where you get to the 44% number um, that we polled on. And here, there are also very, very big deficits. And you can see that by 2020, uh, in 2020, uh, general government, government overall was spending about $30,000 per person per year. So these are just some general facts about the size of government and, 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 and where government spending comes from. Um, okay, what do they do with the money? What, is the, what does the U.S. federal government, uh, federal government do with the money? Um, so this pie chart shows the, uh, the revenue, and uh, the revenue is uh, what we talked about in the, on the previous slide. Individual income taxes are bringing in about half of the uh, federal government's total revenue, then those Social Security and Medicare taxes. Uh, corporate income tax is really a pretty small slice of the pie, despite all of the talk and focus on corporate income taxation. Um, and then uh, other is a range of different types of, uh, of revenue raising, including uh, customs duties and excise taxes and things like that. Uh, then over here we have the expenditure side. Okay, in 2021 they were spending a lot more money than uh, they were bringing in in terms of revenue. That's that, that deficit, and they will continue to do so. Um, this is a percent of the total, 24% went to what's called income security. So, uh, and this was a uh, number that was probably boosted a lot in 2021 by, uh, by unemployment insurance, by the social programs that were put in in response, uh, the government response to, uh, to COVID. Um, next biggest area is social security, which uh, for those of you who don't come from a US context or aren't familiar with, the, uh, uh, with the, these institutions, social security means that's the, the, the old age pension that you get in the United States. So when you, uh, when you retire in the, in the US, you get a check from the government and the government taxes you while you're working in order to pay for that. They're really actually taking money from people who are working and then sending it out to retirees today. They're not saving it up in a big pool of money, although sometimes they pretend that they're doing that, but actually they're not really doing that. 
Um, there are different ways that the government spends uh, money on health uh, and health insurance. So this category here, this 11.7%, uh, this is spending uh, that they often, a lot of it is giving money to the states to then uh, pay for Medicaid, which is the program for the poor. There's also Medicare, which is the program for the elderly. Uh, only around 11% of the federal go government's budget is actually going to national defense right now. 5% is going to net interest payments. And remember, 2021 interest rates were still really, really low. You know, as interest rates rise, uh, one of the, op the source of opposition to interest rates rising uh, is that the government realizes, hey, we're going to have to actually pay more interest if interest rates rise. Um, I think that might be a good thing. It would give them some discipline, but uh, net interest is actually quite low because interest rates have been so low for so long. And if, if they rise, that's going to be a bigger uh, part of the budget. Okay, and then there's some other categories. The federal government doesn't spend very much on education, actually. Uh, educational spending is only, uh, by governments, only 7% of that is federal government spending. Uh, the rest of it is state and local government spending. So let's look at what state and local governments do. So we have a federal system in the U.S. And uh, as the 10th Amendment to the Constitution says, all powers not granted to the federal government are reserved for the states. So here's what states are doing and what they're, what, how they're raising money and how they're spending money. So for states, you know, the big items are uh, property taxes and sales and gross receipts tax. That's how states finance their um, their activities. Uh, they do also have uh, individual income taxes. In some states like California, those are very, very high. The top bracket uh, income tax rate in, uh, for, in California, just for California, is 13.3%. Okay, that's quite high. In a state like Texas, it, it's zero. So Texas has to rely a lot on some of these other sources like property taxes or sales and, uh, uh, sales and gross receipts taxes. So, um, uh, and then if we look at what the state and local governments are spending money on, they're spending money on, there's a lot of, you know, welfare, public welfare programs. Elementary and secondary education is a, is a big piece. Health and hospitals, uh, higher ed, highways, police protection. So, so public safety is really actually a pretty low share of the, of the spending. A lot of the spending is going to elementary and secondary education, uh, public welfare and health plans, like the extent to which state governments uh, kick in for for, the, for Medicaid, for these uh, health insurance programs for the poor, um, uh, and, uh, and, and so on. Higher ed, big piece of spending there. Uh, but again, you know, with higher ed, some of that is, is recouped by fees, by usage fees, tuition fees, for example, but, but not all of it. Those, en those entities don't actually run, typically run large surpluses or any surpluses. Mm -hmm.